The Creative Jungle podcast is all about speaking to and learning from inspiring entrepreneurs, creatives, and well-being experts. In each episode, we discuss their unconventional lives and journeys, what they've learned and how they've got to where they are now, any tips they can share with you so that you too may live a much more creative and happier life. The podcast is brought to you by us, Dan and Sam. We're a couple who set up MYO and Creative Jungle Company, and we are all about helping people get creative and bring a little bit more creativity to life and business. We host over 14 different arts and crafts workshops from our central London studio, virtually offsite at events and festivals. We have a range of creative kits, and we also run creative thinking workshops. So having helped thousands of people we think we know a thing or two about helping people get creative and perhaps being a little bit happier we hope to see you in the studio at some point soon too be sure to subscribe so you can hear about future episodes right let's get started here's the next episode today on the podcast we can't believe our look we have the illustration legend Lorna Scobie um, and we're huge fans of our 365 Days of Art books. And if you're watching, you'll be able to see them on the screen. We have a couple, but I think there's a range of four now. Um, and many of you will be familiar with them. Um, they're all about encouraging you to dabble with your creative side regularly, which here at MIO and Creative Jungle, we firmly believe in. Mm-hmm. She's illustrated tons of beautiful children's books and prints and has a real f- passion for nature and animals. And besides all this, she also has a full time job, which I couldn't believe. No, I we found out. I, where did she find the time? Um, <laughs> but she's also senior commission, commissioning designer at the brilliant Macmillan Children's Books. Um, and she's worked on projects with the likes of Stella McCartney, Moo, Moo Hermes, Hermes, the fashion brand. Um, in short, she's an author, illustrator, book designer, and much more. She is at Lona Scobie. L-O-R-N-A-S-C-O-B-I-E on Instagram. And her website is lonascoby.com. And there is just so many colorful, amazing things on there. If you need a boost in the morning, yeah. just have a quick look at the homepage. It's so nice. It's so nice to scroll through. And a lovely quote from It's Nice That. Champions of Creativity is Lona Scobie will knock your jaded skulls together with her particularly acerbic knack for characterizing animals. What a quote. Welcome, Lona. Hi. <laughs> That's all so lovely. I just can't really believe it when you say it like that. I just, I think, wow, that person does a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's you. Gosh. Um, but yeah, thank you. That's so kind. And I'm really, really honored to be speaking to you because, um, yeah, I just love what you do. So thank oh, you. Gosh, thank, thank you. you. It means a lot for you to say that. We absolutely love what you do. And when, as Sam said, every time we play with your book and we're thinking, oh, who should we have? We were like, oh, let's just chant it and see if Lorna's free and be willing to speak with us. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. You were the one on this series where it's like, yeah, because I, I happened to be just using the book and I was yeah. like, yeah, let's drop her an email. Let's yeah, see if let's she can do it. Yeah. it so. Wait, were you using it as a laptop stand? Because I feel like <laughs> no, they're really good for that. <laughs> they're good thick they're books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, give, they really... give you a nice height. <laughs> yeah. If you want to just put your feet up in the evening, it's, yeah. just get three or four. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Any reason to get four, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Um, so let's start from the very beginning, because I mean, there's so much I want to ask you, but from from the beginning, it always feels like, or did you feel like you were destined to be doing what you're doing now? You know, you were awarded an amazing scholarship, the Arkwright Scholarship, and then studying in art college um, and university, and then being immersed in illustration and working in publishing for now nearly a decade. Yeah. Was this something you thought you always thought you'd end up doing? It's funny, I think like most kids, I thought um, there was like hundreds of things I wanted to be. I was, you know, certain I was going to be a paleontologist and then a vet and then a biologist um, and then later an engineer, which is um, um, engineering's the scholarship that I got. Um, But I think looking back, I think it's definitely has like art has been a constant in my life. And I think you're right. It does seem like I was almost like destined to do it. But I think it's because I was lucky enough um, to have always been encouraged to be creative by my parents mm. um, when I was growing up. And we have a lot of family down in Cornwall. 
So we used to travel down quite a lot um, from Somerset where I um, grew up. Nice. Um, and the, the visits to Cornwall were always full of like gallery visits. And um, I think I just felt quite kind of immersed in an arty world, even though my parents weren't actually artists. And um, I didn't kind of, I, my, my auntie paints, but it, it wasn't like a kind of, it wasn't like forced on me in any yeah. way. Yeah. Um, but I think I just did kind of subconsciously feel that art was a valid way to earn a living and that it was kind of a respectable thing to do as well. Um, and I think that's what really gave me the confidence um, when I came to choosing what I was going to do um, to pursue it as a career. Um, but I am so grateful for that because, you know, I know other people, it's not always like that. And I think that's something that's like a mission with my books actually is to remind everyone that um, you are creative and, you know, whatever your job or your upbringing, um, you know, you are and you can do art. And the kind of the idea with the 365 books was kind of to give people a little bit of guidance and support on their journey. Mm. Um, but saying that, I didn't know illustration was a thing like, at all until I started my degree in London. And um, I felt like I really wanted to, anim to do um, animation. Um, so the degree was like an animation and illustration degree. Okay. Um, so I started that and then I heard about this illustration thing and I thought, oh my God, like this, wow, this sounds amazing. You can be like an artist, but you can also work on books um, and like you can earn money from doing what you love. Um, and and also like I, I love the kind of idea of having lots of variety as well and the types of jobs Um so that was a really exciting revelation. Um, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and at Kingston, which is where I went, we had like quite a lot of visits from um, professional illustrators who gave an insight and showed that actually it could be a career. So I think it kind of like it naturally, there was kind of a natural progression to me realizing like, yes. This is legit. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love books, so I'm very happy to be working in publishing too. So yeah, it's, it's it's kind of I never I never really thought that I kind of had a natural way in but actually I think yeah I was quite lucky I was sort of guided towards it but not in a forceful way you were surrounded by it I think it's what you said there's actually quite important you were you were lucky and you know you were surrounded by it and you started seeing it as a as a legit job or you know this is something I can do for a living because I think well, at least when I grew up you didn't really meet artists or illustrators it's always kind of put to oh this is a hobby or you know this is something you dabble with in your spare time but there are so many amazing creative jobs you can do um yeah. and I love that well did you ever have to um kind of fight or steer but you know choose between that engineering route yeah um <laughs> was there a decision point where you went I'm gonna stop this and go this way instead yeah, absolutely. Literally, well, I can still remember, like I was sat in the kitchen in my parent in my mum's um, house, and um, I, li I literally remember sitting down and having the conversation with her and saying, "I can either go to Falmouth and do art. It was it was between three actually. It was, you know, doing an art um, foundation in the West Country, doing art in London, or doing um, engineering. I think it was at Loughborough University and." Um, and with that as well, because I think I think there was some kind of scheme where, if, like, if you're a, a female going into engineering, you, you I think they even kind of supported it financially as well. So there was kind of it felt like my brain was saying, "Oh, you should, you know, you should go and do engineering." And but then I sat down with my mom, and she just said, "Like, do what you love, just do what you love." And, and then and so I was like, "Well, that's obvious. <laughs> it's going to be art." Um, but yeah I think I always have slightly forced thought because I really love maths as well and um, um, science as well so but I think yeah it's just I just feel so grateful that I was had you know that my mum always said to just do what you love and I forget love about money like <laughs> I mean just she said like if you as long as you work hard like you're always gonna get it okay. so yeah, yeah. Absolutely. At that time, out of interest, were you sketching all the time or like how when it came to that decision, why were you like, yeah, I need to go down this route? Were you just 
I don't know, studying courses, mm-hmm. going to museums, getting inspiration, mm-hmm. talking about it or reading about it? Or was it just a deep down good instinct yeah. that this feels like the right thing to do? I think I was reading quite a lot. I was really into um, uh, the Dutch um, painters like Vermeer and Rembrandt and, and just kind of fascinated by their kind of unbelievable skill level. Um, and so I felt like there was so much to learn because I was just reading these books and thinking like how, you know, obviously, obviously like I'm, I'm never going to be able to paint like that. But but like I just felt like there was this whole kind of world that I hadn't really been kind of taught at school. Um, yeah. There just felt like so much learning to be done. Um, but yeah, where I grew up in Somerset, there wasn't really any kind of galleries we didn't really go to London that much like I had the, the amazing Cornish art down in Cornwall um but I think there was just the idea of going to London as well was so exciting and um you know from the countryside from literally like living amongst fields to then <laughs> having like yeah I mean also partly having a huge top shop yes. <laughs> the <laughs> draw. yeah <laughs> um, yeah so I, I think like yeah it just felt it felt like a little bit of a risk as well it felt a little bit scary which is usually things I kind of shy away from but Mm. um yeah but yeah sketching I think I was I was was probably like keeping a few sketchbooks but it wasn't kind of um yeah so yeah the whole family wasn't going Lauren is going to be an illustrator it was kind of would they have been a little bit surprised when you made that decision then I think I think they would say now that that they would I think of all my family members my brothers and sisters like I would I would have been the artist always yeah okay but they're all really creative like they all love doing art as well and um so that's really nice but um yeah yeah Gosh, it, what a what a path I'm just thinking I, I can't imagine what that fork in the road <laughs> Would have felt like. it, yeah, because it's amazing with that stuff. It happens when you're very young, yeah. like 15, 16, 17, that like a lot of the times the decision you make then, you're committed to it for 10 years almost, regardless of whether um, yeah. you enjoy it or not. You just kind of get caught up in it. So yeah. it's great that you yeah. kind of made the right decision at yeah. that point. But, that, but I think like that's, that is something that yeah, I always think about that and not, not from my own point of view, but from, you know, from other people like you might, be in a job thinking actually you know what I am really creative and I can't I can't be creative in my day-to-day so that's another that's like that is kind of my um idea with these books the 365 books is to just kind of provide that opportunity for people to be creative and um yeah because we didn't all you know think of what the decisions we made when we were 15 like it's yeah. is yeah exactly I- and everyone can be and everyone can definitely enjoy a bit of dabbling <laughs> yeah That's what I love about them um looking back would you I know you've actually it sounds like you've followed some amazing advice and your own intuition as well and what you want and what you wanted to do but is there anything on reflection you would you wish you had known or you would tell yourself or you would tell younger young people at the moment who are facing such forks in their road I think i definitely say um say yes to the scary things um there's been definite times like that I'm I've said no to stuff because it was out of my comfort zone and I do regret that now um so so one of the things like I was asked to do some face painted um animals on some children for um Stella McCartney kids and it was like in for the actual shoot so I would be there kind of on the day like painting the the oh, children's wow. faces um and I said no to doing it in person I did it kind of I just drew them instead to send them to a um, professional face painter um but I just kind of I just really wish that I'd said yes because I think that would have been such a great opportunity and like so different from anything I, I've like, ever been asked to do and um I think I would have just learned from the experience so much but I thought no, I've never face painted a child before. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. So I said no, but, but a good thing that did come out of it is that I really kind of realised that actually I should have said yes. <laughs> and so now I do say stuff out of my comfort zone. So yeah. say yes to stuff. So um, a good thing did come out of it, but I would just say like, 
yeah, say yes, say yes to things. Say yes and learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we, yeah, we kind of have that all the time because because we do quite a lot of different things. We always get these weird inquiries from or events like, could you do build a wire sculpture as an example? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, when do you need it by? Two weeks. Okay. Straight on YouTube and figure it out yeah. how to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it always kind of works out in the long run, which is really nice. Mm. So kind of. Yeah, and then yeah that's such a good attitude. I love that you have that attitude. I think it's it's like it's hard to say yes sometimes. So yeah, no, absolutely. Definitely. And then yeah, I guess the longer you do something, you can be a bit more strategic with things you say no to. Yeah. Um, but especially at the start, it's kind of good to just say yes to everything, and then yeah. you learn so much in a short space of time. I'm doing it right. So the next question was back to these books that I showed yeah. earlier. Mm. Like where did, and I, we kind of touched on it a little bit. These are the two that we have. Um, the one for every day of the year and inspiring your imagination every day. What, yeah, where did that idea, idea come, come from? from? And what was the process like? Because it says it on the title, like there's 365 activities in each <laughs> one and you've got four now. So that's over a thousand yeah. doing my math. <laughs> Um, yeah. how, how did you do the first one and what was the process like um I like so I remember again this is like a really kind of pivotal moment that I remember so well because I was having lunch um near London Bridge with my lovely editor at Hardy Grant um we'd worked on like a couple um coloring books in the past and we were just kind of having a chat about what the next thing could be um and we just got talking about how we could create a book that really helps give everyone um, so even the people that don't consider themselves as arty, um, a place where they could create. Yeah. And so like in that discussion, I was thinking about the hurdles that I personally have to overcome. Um, like every time I start a new painting or a new book um, in order to, you know, actually kind of let, like let my mind relax enough for me to be able to create. Yeah. Um, and so that was the starting point for the book, really. And one of the things that really used to hold me back, um, which I think is actually so common, is that I find that when you have a blank page, it's so intimidating. Yeah. So, and that you buy a sketchbook and it's just like these endless blank pages and you just <laughs> think, ah. Yeah. Um, so I, the idea for the 365 Days books was that they become almost like personal sketchbooks. Um, but then rather than just providing kind of empty spaces and telling someone just fill the space, it was um, the idea was to kind of start off some of the activities first or create an example um, for people to follow. Um, but I didn't want them to be too prescriptive. That was something I was quite keen on from the start. So that because I really feel like with art that there isn't like a right or wrong way to be creative. Yeah. Um, so the goal was to kind of create a space in the book where the user feels really comfortable and encouraged and just kind of excited about creating. Yeah. So you yeah. kind of like in, in, encourage, like um, embrace your mistakes and experiment. Um, and I think like sadly, sometimes um, the education system here in the UK um, it's like slightly restrictive and rigid and, it can mean that it's so easy for a child to feel like they aren't good at art. And I think that sticks with people all the way into adulthood. And you, you just feel like, oh, I wasn't good at school. So I, you know, I must be rubbish now. And it's just absolutely not true. And everyone can do art and everyone can be creative. And so the books are kind of, you know, it's like reminding you that everything you create is brilliant. Yes. And it's about enjoying the process and not worrying too much about the end result. And, Oh, yeah, no. Having yeah. fun. We love that. That's that's a real pull out. It's it really is about enjoying the process because um just to resonate what you said, it, there's a lot of oh, this hasn't turned out great, so I'm awful. Even though actually you could have had a really good time doing it. And who cares? Who cares? It might not be yeah. what you wanted to come out, but it's that enjoying the process makes the activity worthwhile. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. And it's it's just like forget about the end result it doesn't matter if you never look at that piece of work again like if you've had half an hour of relaxation then it was worth it yeah absolutely yeah yeah and that's 
that's what I love about the books is that you just you have 20 minutes, you have half an hour, you can have a go at five or six different ones. And within each one, as you said, there isn't a big two paragraph explanation. It could be just draw lots of frogs and just give it a go. And there's always enough room to try a few and like mess around and dabble and then move on to the next one. Mm. And you can write kind of... that one. I'm going to write that down for the yeah. next one. <laughs> 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 I'm running get out. A credit in the back. Um, yeah. But what, like how, you, for these books, you need to have a lot of inspiration to illustrate them. Mm. Like what was, so you decided, you spoke with your publisher, you kind of said, yeah, here's an idea. I don't know. Did you go traveling? Did you go home to the countryside to be amongst nature? Like how, where yeah. did all these ideas come from? Cause it's, I guess it got easier after the first one. Cause you kind of knew, or maybe you got harder, but what yeah. was it like for the first one in particular? Yeah, I think you're right. Like traveling is something that always for me triggers ideas actually. And um, I think it's something about like being taken out of your normal environment and, and everything suddenly exciting and interesting and, um, you want to kind of record everything. So definitely I did used to go back to Somerset and um, stay at my mum's house and kind of just blitz it. And um, she always has like beautiful kind of little vases of flowers, like, and, and like, just kind of, you know, she just has lots of beautiful stuff that I'm like, oh, I just want to draw that all the time. So I kind of, <laughs> use a lot of her house as inspiration or, um, uh, yeah. And I don't know, I think, I have to think about kind of how to encourage um, art quite a lot in my day job, I think. So I, mm -hmm. because it's working with illustrators, so, and like, they're all incredibly talented. Um, so it's it's not that I'm kind of like having to coach them through or anything like that, but you kind of pick up on um, what the stumbling blocks are for creativity. So you kind of have to problem solve a little bit to think, okay, how would you overcome that? Um, that block with with your creativity and so I think naturally I have to just it's just kind of I've learned ways to help people um, unleash that side of themselves um, but it's weird I kind of just sit I'm always it's funny now like with when like the deadline's coming up and I'm like okay I need to have written 365 ideas and I've got like a month because the, ske the schedule is always quite tight on these um and I just think like it's so overwhelming until I actually just sit down and kind of um just sort of uh it's weird it's kind of like a tap it just kind of when I actually sit and think about it I, they come out quite a lot easier but it does seem incredibly overwhelming yeah. actually my family are so great because um I've got like lots and lots of brothers and sisters and their partners as well like they're all kind of so brilliant to talk to and I just say like give me an activity and that'll be you know like your frog one just now like they'll just say something kind of totally outside of the box and I'll just be like yes that's brilliant that's a good one. <laughs> yeah because yeah like, everyone's probably getting completely sick of my ideas by now so I'm just <laughs> <laughs> mining everyone else yeah I get, yeah and you must get a lot from the community as well because mm. you have a large following like I imagine when you post a new book people are like oh here's an idea you could include in the next one or here's a theme that yeah would... yeah they are really really helpful and um but yeah that, actually that's a really good idea I might kind of be more um might use that a bit more in the future and say like what would you love to see and yeah what yeah. do you like doodling what's your go-to thing to play yeah how, how yeah. many books do you think you have in your locker on the 365 do you have like do you already um, have a few more books in your kind mind, of in your yeah. mind in terms of yeah I'm, there's the next the next one that i want to do is i'm i really want to do it so i'm kind of um like i'm really excited by it nice. um and i've just done like a kind of mini version um pocket art which is oh. i'll just grab it actually yeah um, the whole shelf will probably fall down <laughs> kind of like your hands um, are kind of you can hold it in your hand size oh, oh, nice. very nice it's it's 100 activities and it they're all like completely different from um 365 yeah but it's a similar kind of well it's the same ethos in that there's no right or wrong yeah um so again that was something I really wanted to do because I thought like actually they're so bulky that that like sometimes you just want to grab something small and sit on the train with it and be a bit more discreet yeah, yeah. um 
So it would be nice to do like some more of those ones, I think, as well. Nice. Um, and you get yeah, three for the price of one. Yeah. <laughs> Almost as an illustrator, which is nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the, like kind of going on on the illustration mm. how do you find because it must be I, it, I get the impression sorry that you kind of were on the publishing side of things were you advising sorry did you publish a book after advising illustrators first and I'm just trying to get a sense for like how do you find it in terms of making your own stuff versus illustrating for somebody else's book yeah um, what is that dynamic like and which one was first did you do your own thing illustrate um, make your own book or did you illustrate somebody else's book and kind of go oh i can do that i can make my own one mm. and I, does that inform you advising illustrators sorry just to extend the question some more there's a triangle of like <laughs> yeah. illustrating for other people yeah. that's too much for my brain <laughs> <laughs> um, i think i can't remember i'm not so good with my dates I think basically I feel like my whole life has been a blur I think yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys feel like that but my I think I was uh, I so I was signed up to illustrate a text by an author but I didn't actually start on it for quite a while and I think by the time I'd started on it I'd possibly started doing my own stuff as well oh, okay. um so they've thing is they feel quite different well certainly like um working the kind of the publishing side the the job the day job I do it feels very different from the freelance stuff but the freelance stuff as well like that that's you're right like that's kind of split into two it's either kind of illustrating my own ideas or illustrating somebody else's um but I do love them both I they're they are quite different ways to work because when you illustrate your own picture book it means that you write it too um which is really fun but I think that is quite a lot of pressure as well um, yeah. I've never kind of thought of myself as being any good at writing so it's that was kind of that was quite a kind of um, hurdle to get over um, but yeah but but really fun and um, I, I really enjoy illustrating for authors as well because it means you get the text already and it's you, it's finished and well it's kind of near finished and it's brilliant already and completely inspiring and it usually makes me feel really excited so and I just want to kind of start drawing straight away nice. um so that's good because it kind of removes that whole um kind of worry and self-doubt <laughs> that you get when you're doing your own stuff yeah. and you kind of feel a bit more like you're in it together mm. yeah yeah I was gonna say that collaboration is comforting I guess because mm. you can bounce ideas around yeah a little bit more maybe yeah um, it can be that there's a the one thing that I found though is that when you work with a writer, it can be that there's a certain style that they're after, yeah. um, or like that the publisher has kind of expected that you'll do for that book. Um, so it can feel a bit more creative when you do your own stuff when the whole thing is your idea. Because, and I feel like that's they're the areas where um, my work kind of develops and my style develops a bit more because. Um, you just feel slightly more free, I think, when you do your own projects and I guess less like you're kind of going to mess up somebody else's dream and yeah. else, like projects. So, yeah, but I love both. But they, yeah, they do feel kind of like quite different. Quite beasts, different. Really. Yeah. 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 No, no, that makes sense. How do you balance? Sorry. Oh, sorry. How no, do you no, balance? How do you balance that time? Do you find, you know, between day job working for others and then making sure you carve out time not only for your own projects but for you to play because yeah. I imagine that that's a big part of your process it's just dabbling with ideas and you know practicing yeah yeah that's so true about play I think like so at the moment it's kind of with a complete lack of social life <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um it's easy it's easy yeah. <laughs> lockdown great I can draw all day <laughs> <laughs> it actually it does actually work quite well I think I'm I feel like I'm naturally quite good at being able to compartmentalize um nice. with work so my day job is usually um like pre-covid um at the company at the publishing office like five days a week um and then my freelance illustration I do at the weekends like here in my home studio um although at the moment I'm at home all the time so yeah. I have got two desks I've got like um over there that's like my freelance desk oh really this is um over on that side of this the other side of 
this desk is um, my Macmillan desk. And I, that kind of like having separate physical spaces actually helps so much. Yeah, I can imagine they probably even look very different. Yeah, because the work for people listening, yeah. the desk behind Lauren and now it's incredibly mm. colourful. There's yeah. lots of books, yes. and ornaments. <laughs> is the Macmillan one like, I don't know, a few hundred year old books on the side? And it's yeah, bit... like, literally the only <laughs> thing on it is this like really formal um, <laughs> pot, of pen, pot of like black fine liner pens. Um, yeah. But I have two big screens on this side. So it's kind of okay. like a kind of digital side as well. Because oh, I, I really wanted to separate um, digital with with like my kind of working desk as well. I didn't want to kind of have a huge screen in front of me. Yeah. Um, Why is that? I think because I was, it's your play thing, I think. Because I was realising in where in my studio, in my past, in my previous house, that I wasn't creating that space to play. And I think I just felt a bit kind of restricted. And when I sat down at my desk and at my computer, I felt like, okay, there's 50 emails that I need to deal with. And I wasn't kind of creating a space for myself that felt um, that I could get really messy and um, yeah, just make a massive scene (laughs) and, and play. But yeah, so that was like my goal was, if I create a space that I feel like I actually want to go and sit there mm. and just have all my, I have all my materials like out as well. Like, yeah. Nice. Um, Ready to yeah. grab. Yeah. Because I just feel like unless it's, unless you make it as easy as possible for yourself, you'll just avoid being creative because, well, for me, I feel like that because I feel like there's kind of things to do. There's always kind of like chores or you know, there's always something to do. So it was kind of making, trying to create a space to lure me in. <laughs> yes. Say. Yeah. No, no, yeah. No, that makes, makes a lot so of sense. sense. Is there kind of, do you have a ritual, for example, on a Friday, you finish the day job. Do you like get up early on a Saturday to do the, the freelance things or do you do some, do you have a routine in the morning mm. to kind of prime yourself to almost be like, cool, the day job is done now. Now I need to get into this mindset mm. or are you just, are you quite trained to just go to the desk on a Saturday morning, the more colorful one and just get to it? Yeah, I'm quite, I feel quite trained. I think it was easier in the office because as soon as you leave yeah. the office, it's um you're done but I think I have like a little routine where I just I mean I'm sure everyone does this now that we all work at home but I just put my laptop away at the weekend and I put even kind of the the keyboard and the screen I like push the screen really far away and like um remove my notebook like literally take it out of the room um and like turn my work phone off and put that out of the room as well so I think I, I get I physically get rid of it and and that really helps I think yeah um it's the same kind of like as it's 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 another thing with like having a block with creativity I think like if you're sat in a room with a pile of washing up to do it's really hard to be creative because you're you're just going to be thinking oh there's something like more important in inverted commas that um I should be doing so I think that's kind of a really good thing to do if you're feeling like you can't quite get into the creative flow just quick like as fast as you can like try and get everything cleared out of the way and um make a space for yourself which feels lovely and you're not just gonna be looking at kind of your to-do list yeah yeah yeah, no, I think that, yeah that's, that's so really good advice yeah. i think just even every day especially when you're working at home putting the laptop in a closet or a cupboard and just intentionally opening it and taking it out in the morning can mm. make a big difference and similarly putting it away at night mm. to just have that separation because mm. yeah. I think yeah people are just going really struggling to yeah. make the transition at home which yeah. is totally understandable to so. to go from like you know we've talked about you setting up and exploring your oh well developing your career and how you explore your creative skills and how you develop them for somebody who's looking to do this both from a kind of illustrator side and also from a getting their work known what what things would you advise them to be aware of and how would you advise them to get your their work known because obviously you have created a massive following you've created such a movement with your books what advice would you give or things that they should watch out for 
I had some really good advice when I first started out and I can't remember sadly who said it, but I was told um, just even from the start. So even before you have any illustration job, even if it's like before you've even picked up a pencil, say you are an illustrator or I'm a designer or I'm an artist or I'm a fashion designer or just say it out loud to as many people as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, and I found that incredibly useful because, you know, I I was working like lots of kind of odd jobs when I first started out and um, so and not, not at all creative jobs. But I remember I was like telling everyone, like, I'm an illustrator and literally felt like I was living a lie and like yeah. living. But, <laughs> but, it, but it meant that further down the line, like I would get messages from people saying like oh I just remembered you're an illustrator like could could you have a go at doing this logo for me and it kind of it's really weird but it kind of it gives you the confidence and it also gives other people the confidence in you as well because Mm -hmm. even if they know you're just starting out Mm -hmm. it says a lot that 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 it's like that person is saying they're confident enough in their skills that they're saying it out loud so Mm -hmm. I don't know I think it like helps with the trust a bit and yeah even when I was a student I remember saying it as well like not even mentioning that I was a student like saying yeah. I'm, I'm an illustrator because I think I think a lot of people say as well like I'm a newly graduated illustrator as well and you just yeah. you can drop that you can just say you're an illustrator, illustrator. yeah I that's such simple but powerful advice own the title you yeah, know exactly. what you're trying to be because then your brain subconsciously is like what would an illustrator do in this situation yeah. would an illustrator say yes to this or would they go to this event you're like yeah. you're programming your brain to yeah to come the thing you're saying. yeah and so what cool. about in terms of getting um the work out there getting known getting published getting seen by hundreds and thousands of people i think social media accounts are great um yeah you know there's obviously like a lot wrong with social media but I actually think the illustration and art communities on Instagram are so lovely um and I would would say as well like don't be disheartened by not having 50 billion followers like in your first week because you know it's not going to happen and you just you just have to stay true to yourself and like to your style as well um and just keep going keep working and you could even like set yourself briefs so you've always kind of got something fresh and new on your Instagram and um, like regularly updated. Mm. Um, you know, you could like uh, redesign your favorite book jacket or design a poster for a band that you really like, or just um, literally drawing your favorite things or something. Just set yourself little projects. Um, there's hashtags as well, aren't there? That yeah, challenges yeah. and yeah, yeah. So kind of. Um, immerse yourself in those illustration communities and um, I think ask questions as well like on on Instagram like ask questions and comments of of the artists that you like or um, because it just feels like it's quite kind of um, it's a community that does share information I've always found and um, yeah I remember like when I was first starting out like um sharing it, things like printers that we really liked and um materials and it just yeah it feels nice and c- like there's a community rather than everyone kind of like closed off and working for themselves so yeah embrace that yeah oh very good advice yeah no yeah, that makes a lot of advice. sense how have you found the transition for example on instagram to lots of video because you yeah. almost you have to be an Ill- you have to be the illustrator side, do the business side, and now it's like oh god, I almost production. need to have a film <laughs> studio. Like, have yeah. you embraced that or kind of? Well, sorry, I know you have a little bit from your Instagram, but has that been? Do you tend to just jump into the new trends on Instagram, for example, like mm. on Reels, IGTVs, because that's the latest thing, or do you kind of wait to see how it evolves? I think how you've summed it up by saying a little bit because I, I can't, I, I found it quite difficult because I haven't like, I guess I haven't, it's my own fault, but I haven't like taken the time to kind of really learn how to do it. So I've sort of kind of stumbled along. Um, but I, I'm trying to do a bit more of it. I'm trying to do more um, short videos. So like kind of, 15 30 second ones because I feel like attention spans are just 
really short at the moment. Yeah, um, and you kind of have to think, what would people want to share and what would, what would people want to kind of show their friends and family? And um, so that's the time. It is interesting. Like you're having to kind of think of it in a whole new way, um, which is good, I think. But yeah, it's it's strange because it's a lot of pressure for a lot of illustrators and um, especially I think for painters and um, yeah, you almost have to, you almost feel like, oh gosh, do I have to be filming? Because I, I don't really like um, to camera, it's like I like don't really like being in any of the videos myself, like yeah. hands fine, but like I just don't really like showing myself in them really. So. I, I, it would be a real shame if it had to go that way because I think that would put a lot of people up, off sharing their artwork because, yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes it can feel a little bit invasive. But yeah, do you have um, a newsletter? Yeah, out of interest, huh? do you have a newsletter? Oh God, I feel really guilty because I started <laughs> one like oh, years ago and then I just haven't kept it up and I kind of it's. I mean, I feel like all I would be saying is, oh, it's another book out or something yeah. like that. I, know, I yeah, feel so like my mum tells me these things because she gets like an Amazon email saying, yeah. Lorna has a book out. And then <laughs> so I think like, I feel like Amazon is doing that job. Yeah. 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 No, no, that, yeah, that's yeah. totally fair. I just, I know some people with Instagram, it's a bit weird because you don't own the audience particularly. It's mm. like, it's all Instagram can decide how many people see what you're posting basically. Mm. And obviously if, if it can sense people like it, it'll share it further. So like I've just heard recently, loads of people are kind of going back to uh, build up a newsletter because you don't know what's going to happen in the, the future. Thing. So it was just- It's, funny, of, it's funny you say it because my, my um, fiance is really on at me for years saying you need to do this you need to do a newsletter you yeah. need to be building up your email like who, who you can email and I would just be like no it's all about Instagram yeah. but I think he's right and he just he just is under the impression that you know Instagram could suddenly just sort of pull them out yeah. and you know then then we kind of have to start from scratch so I think I'm going to try and make it like my 2021. Is that what year we're in? Whatever year. Yeah, I, I mean, who even? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last goal. Eight, eight, eight. <laughs> yeah, I have 21 goals. Um, so the next question here, we've kind of, one was around inspiration. I think mm. we've got a good sense of where you get your inspiration from, mm. um, kind of going home. And I can just picture your mum calling, saying she's like doing up the house or something. You're like, yes, yeah. I can go down and get yeah. lots more inspiration. <laughs> yeah, she's actually moving house, which is oh, yeah. incredibly exciting. <laughs> oh, that is exciting. <laughs> have a new whole new view <laughs> nice well what um and again the next question was around fostering your creativity again i think we've touched on that mm. like what are your go-to materials and exercises, exercises i guess to do, just yeah. to give people a sense for how do you yeah what's the if you have to if you're going to a desert island and had to bring three objects that that's all you could use what might they be yeah and what for uh, i would bring my watercolors I love watercolors I know um I think I love them because they are they dry really quickly I've got really short patience and <laughs> I like to be able to kind of draw something turn the page move on um so that's why I like watercolors and my absolute like love of my life is I have actually a whole pot of them is these um uh, uh, what kind of pens? No, yeah. yeah, and they're so good. I mean, I obviously don't need this quantity. That's <laughs> ridiculous. I buy them whenever I see them. Oh, wow. <laughs> I always tell myself like it's cheaper. It's cheaper than online to buy it in the shop. But yeah, I clearly have a problem. But <laughs> then you just you fill them with water so that you don't need to take a pot of water and a paintbrush with you. So oh, all you okay. need is literally a watercolor brush even like a tiny watercolor set um, although I have a really like a big one that I absolutely adore yeah. um, there are art pieces in their own right like a watercolor set that's yeah. been used a yeah. few times yeah and my um my granny gave me a set that when I was eight that 
I still have, I obviously like replace the pans, the colors inside, but um, I still use it. And actually my um, partner's daughter used it for quite a while as well as like her kind of special paint set. So it's so nice when you kind of can keep something going like that for yeah. a long time. I think like that's, yeah, it's worth investing in like a nice, set of watercolors because you can just keep replacing the colors and yeah um yeah and then obviously i touch to take a sketchbook as well <laughs> oh, yeah. i'll a bit stuck yeah I was, I, was thinking, I was like there's no way she's gonna forget the paper mm. <laughs> <laughs> what activities are your go-to activities would it be watercolor painting like kind of like still life looking at something and re recreating that or would it be doodling with watercolors or would it be mixing what is I, kind of the first thing you start doing I think it would be looking like doing it from um, life because yeah. I've, I've gotten really, I think I'm pretty late to the party, but <laughs> I've been really into David Hockney recently. Oh, yes. And his work ethic, like in the last few years, like I just, he's become like, I'm just totally obsessed with his books and like hearing interviews with him and, um, and his kind of the thing that he does is he just looks at his world and draws what he sees and he has this kind of absolute love of life and the world and that kind of shines through his drawings and he's he's just such a good look a looker you know yeah. that, that sounds weird to say but yeah. um I think like when we take our sketchbook out and about or even like around the home and really look and draw what we see um, that's like where our natural style emerges because you kind of you're not like overthinking it you're just you're just absorbing what you're seeing in front of you and um so but also I feel like that's where my style develops as well when I'm looking at things so I think I'd probably be doing like observational work and drawing all the palm trees and um I was drawing sand on the beach the other day like I was that desperate I was wow <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> It's not yes. the best picture. <laughs> Anything is an inspiration. Yeah, like on the style point, and it's, you've mentioned a few times, like it sounds like it's still evolving, and I'm, I'm sure in yeah, 50 years' time it, it'll involve tons, but was there a point in time, because I think like you, you can spot your style from quite far away yeah. from looking on the website and all the different books and the 365 books. Was it a few years in to illustrating a lot that you kind of were like, ah, oh, this is, I found my groove, or has it always been quite similar from the start? It's just been tweaked. I think um, it's weird because before I went to university and I was like um, sort of just a doodling, I had like a cartoonist, how to be a cartoonist book. And I was sort of doodling cartoon animals with these like big eyes. And um, that was like how I always drew. And then I went to university and they pretty they just said pretty much like never ever do that again that's just the worst thing I've ever seen and I was like okay gonna try new things and which was the best thing to say because obviously it made me kind of experiment and um try like a billion different styles and collage and um printing and like all different ways of working but I hated every single thing that I did at university like with a passion <laughs> and oh, like yeah. looking back at it now I can't even bear to look at it Oh, wow. but, but it was a really good experience because it made me realize that actually what I love doing is those like animals with big eyes and like the style that I always kind of veered towards naturally as a child so yeah. um but I think like the process the processes I use have evolved and um when I started screen printing that kind of changed quite a lot as well it so that it was kind of it's actually after I finished my degree, but I still had access to um, some print rooms and I got um, some funding from Arts Council to use um, uh, London Print Studio, which I think is closed down now. I think sadly, but um, uh, so I had the opportunity to explore lots of different printmaking techniques, which taught me to kind of limit my palette a bit more and um, think about work in layers as well because you just naturally have to create your artwork in layers for printing mm -hmm. um so that kind of that changed the way I worked a bit and made me make kind of more conscious decisions about color um and I, I did a color course a few years oh god I literally have totally lost track of time I didn't maybe possibly last year um 
with um, a fantastic woman and she, um, me and my partner both did it and um, just, you know, she was teaching us about the importance of dirty colours and using bright, fresh colours alongside like the dirtier colours, like kind of greens and kind of like those murky yellows that you get and um and but also the importance of kind of balancing them with really bright colors as well and I think before I was almost like throwing too much color at the at the page always, always so that was really useful and that's something I would recommend actually is just like keep learning and keep doing courses and mm. training and there's loads of free stuff online as well and um yeah just keep like pushing yourself because I don't think I think it's a trick it's not a trick but a kind of a trap you fall into at university where you feel like you have to have a final style and yeah and yeah. um, there's often like a final show as well and you feel like oh I have to be finished this is this. Show. Yeah. And, um but I really like it's I think it's probably Hockney who inspired me to think of yourself as like a constant kind of developing and changing and um just like keep learning and keep exploring and you'll naturally kind of keep progressing your style yeah absolutely absolutely yeah no that makes a lot of yeah that is life advice in general isn't it (laughs) yeah um moving because the theme of the podcast is creativity and happiness so moving a little bit into that two questions How, how do you or how I mean this is your full-time job doing something creative but how do you use it to be happy or to de-stress or to balance your well-being if at all and what other rituals do you do um, alongside that and then the second question is do you think that creativity has a role in people's well-being and happiness from your perspective? Yeah I mean like I believe that so strongly and I, I've read like a few um, scientific things about it, but to be honest, it's about personal experience and and like how it makes me feel doing art. And I just think it's such a valuable tool. And, you know, if we all did it, if we were all kind of create a bit more creative, I think we'd be a lot happier. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've always found it to be just like so incredibly healing. And especially when you get into the flow as well, where your mind sort of kind of totally loses track of time and stresses and your to-do list, it just kind of disappears completely. And you're suddenly like, oh, I've been sat here for five hours. Yeah. Um, and that that is kind of almost like a sort of meditation and um yeah I think we've all got just so much stress to contend with nowadays and I just think creativity is completely essential and I kind of I wish there was more kind of integrated into the workplace almost or um I don't know or just kind of just encouraged and like yeah just if it was just a bit more kind of time in the day to do it because I think that's when um that's probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks for people is that they just think oh i just don't have time to do it Mm. so let's call in there we're gonna ask the government one day a week should be a creative day for the whole of the uk yes yeah happen that would be amazing just imagine yeah imagine how much happier people would be how much more relaxed how much more caring like there's Mm. all sorts of benefits from doing it Mm. um yeah the fl- and the flow thing is a really good point to mention yeah. because i think just especially now with so much laptop stuff and emails you don't get a chance to, to just, just be absorbed. do something for three hours and get fully absorbed with no mm. distractions mm. Whereas obviously getting creative can can facilitate that mm, that's why i love your saying you know put away anything that might trigger you you yeah. know your mobile turn your screen off yeah draw because yeah you kind of want that space because to, and you'll fill that with your imagination and whatever it is that you're doing you'll just absolutely yeah fun. and boredom like boredom is yeah. good and like we just don't really do that anymore and it's yeah. just such a shame and like yeah doodling is good like you remember even when like you're on the phone to some great aunt that you don't really want to speak to and and you're like sat doodling like I just don't feel like I even do that anymore and yeah. um yeah well your one day idea sounds so good because I feel like people would take what they experienced in that one day and it would give them the confidence to think actually I can bring a bit more of this into my 
life every day. Yeah. A million uh, like percent. I well, I would say 90% of people could fit their five days in the four days easily. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. And, and like having a day to reflect and kind of reprioritize and get fire up your imagination and come up with ideas mm. would, would maybe make you three days being as productive in the long run. Yeah. Um, I 100% agree. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Because the amount of time you feel just like baffing, chatting, having a, co- you know, um, and they are absolutely, you know, valid times. But if, if you took out a day, it would just cut some of that and it would probably just make you focus so much more that day. And then if you spend that day doing something creative and just playing and letting your mind flow, overall, that will probably make you productive. Yeah. Yes. So are you saying one day a week? I thought you meant one day a year. One day a oh, week. One day a week. That's a oh big my happy. God. <laughs> one day a week. Can you imagine? But even one day, you imagine a creative holiday. Yeah. Should be a bank. That would yeah, be. Th- there should be a particular bank holiday that's just coined as so make it easy. It's like it's already a bank holiday. Just make yeah. it a creative day. Yeah. Um, could be really nice. <gasps> okay. This is our new mission. <laughs> <Are laughs> no, let's go be signed up. <laughs> 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 um, yeah yeah no I, yeah i can't i can't express enough just the importance of the creative stuff mm. because it is it's like your high your it's it's a superpower that everybody has we mm. mention it a lot on the podcast mm. and like it's just it's your uh, own expression it's mm. so many things that just people just don't explore and it's, i think it's such it, it's a shame mm. but anyway, it's getting better people are doing more art classes Absolutely. and getting books like your book and exploring it a lot more which is yeah really, really good. but that's exactly why stuff like your book is just it makes it easy <laughs> well, i think that's exactly what it is um, as in like that's what you have to do to persuade people to be creative is like you say you've got to make it easy you have to remove every possible pressure and hurdle that you possibly can yeah and because creativity can be really difficult and i think we just need to at least make the setup as easy as possible and um, get the people started yeah Yeah. it's like yeah tips and tricks that you can do i i sometimes find it easier like if i literally lay out all my materials in front of me um because then i think that relieves a bit of pressure as well because you're not like oh this is you know this is the one pen that i have to do a picture with and it's just if it just feels like that's like an added pressure so if you lay out all your materials it kind of takes the pressure away to have to kind of stick to one thing and yeah absolutely and even i mean how we run our classes is that you can talk so much about how to do something and give so much instruction, but you know, it's all about just getting started, you know, yeah. to your point yeah. about having a blank page or a blank piece of liner to carve and you're like, what, but just get started. And before yeah. you know it, 10 minutes in, you're in the flow and you're eager to. That's to so more. true. That's so true. That's such a good piece of advice. Like just, just start, just make a line, just make yeah, a mark. Make a like even if it's like a scribble at the side of the page, just yeah. It's like being in control of your material and yeah, yeah own it. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, what questions do we have? So nice. are we on to recommendations next? Yeah. So yeah, we're coming up towards the end. Mm. Uh, this has been really, really interesting. Yeah, so thanks thank again you. for for being on. Um, the next, do you want to go for yeah. Diana? I was so ask people, you yeah. <laughs> for, people, for people who are looking to lead a more creative life, we've talked about that mark making that um, of, you know, using your books, making it easy. What other recommendations would you have out there for books, podcasts, materials, places to go, anything? What recommendations would you have? I think I think being creative with friends because yeah. you, and like even at the moment, you could do this over Zoom or, um, you know, I've done like a few kind of drawing evenings with um, my mum and her partner and also uh, my best friend who doesn't live in this country so it's quite nice because you know you don't have to be on the same continent or um you, you know we can't see everyone we'd like to at the moment so um yeah just having like a zoom call maybe like you draw each other while you chat mm-hmm. um or like grab a sketchbook and go and sit in a park with a friend yeah um and like you don't need to show anyone if you don't want mm. to. There's absolutely no pressure. Just do it for yourself. And um, like whatever way works for you, 
I think like one of the hardest steps with being more creative is overcoming that absolute nonsense that we tell ourselves that we aren't good enough and you know everyone is good enough and just kind of I would yeah and just try different things like like you're saying like different materials um just try things because um you know you never know what might become like your your favorite new material to use or but I think yeah doing doing it with friends is really good because or family because it kind of you feel relaxed anyway and yeah or like going to kind of a life drawing class or something it's yes. it's easier with friends and you can because you can bounce um, off each other and inspire yeah everyone. you just feel I think feeling safe is such a big mm. thing with creativity is like once you feel safe um it's fine and it just flows out but if you feel a bit yeah if you feel a bit scared or it can, yeah. it can be a bit harder yeah and I know you talked about um artists that inspire you lots of David Hockney <laughs> at the moment being the big <laughs> favorite um is there any other artist or book or podcast anything that you've read or you know and thought oh this is amazing that's really energized you well um she'll be so embarrassed that I'm saying this probably <laughs> but um I recently came across an artist. She's called Emily Powell on Instagram. And um, she is absolutely brilliant because she she's a paint she paints these I mean actually that's actually one of hers there. But she, oh, wow. she, really she nice. um, I have literally hundreds of her <laughs> paintings around the house because I just find them so engaging. She's just so energetic and all her art is so free and full of life and um she's just a wonderful lovely human being and um but she is so inspiring because um she speaks on her instagram as well on stories like pretty much um every day and kind of shows what she's working on and talks about kind of how she's creating her art and like um you know the ups and the ups and downs of it and it's like a very honest look at, at kind of life as an artist mm. um, I'm just just so in awe of her I had the chance to go and visit her studio in the summer last year down in Devon when there was like a um, slight easing in the lockdown and um, yeah it's you found it so inspiring yeah I actually have bought an easel now because I just thought you know, well we I talked to her and I was like oh I just wish I could paint you know yeah. like, <laughs> you're it just and then she was like don't be silly. Just do yeah. it. Just buy yeah. easel. And, um, yeah, we need more people like her in the world. She's just fantastic. And nice. yeah, definitely check out her Instagram because you will. It brings joy every single day looking at her feed and um, so, Emily Powell. So that's at Emily Powell. We'll have a look. Let me check because it might be at Emily Powell Studio. Let me just check to make sure I get it absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Emily Powell with two L's. Yeah. Studio. Nice. check it out everyone now <laughs> just to wrap up what is coming up for you that you would like to share about where can listeners find out more about you and find out about the book that's being worked on that's going to come <laughs> out <laughs> um yeah i've got some really exciting book projects that i'm working mm-hmm. on at the moment i am doing um a new children's book um which I've authored and illustrated and I'm painting that at the moment and it's I'm just loving being kind of sub- submerged in that world and mm. um but that one I'm not sure I can say much about that one um I also have another um really exciting um project with Hardy Grant who I did the 365 um days of art books with yeah. um it's kind of an op- it is actually like kind of an opportunity to create art with your friends and family but it's not technically a book so ah. it's really exciting and I can't wait to share more about it but um yeah, nice. yeah I have to kind of watch this space nice. but, yeah will it be this year do you think or will it be 2022 yeah, I think it's this year nice. um I haven't it's almost finished so um they're always completely miraculous about um timings like it's kind of you finish it and then suddenly it's in the in the shelf so oh my god um, yeah so but as soon as I can share it I will because I'm really excited about That's it about that awesome. and the, the very last question we have is what is your favorite animal to draw at the moment 
it's got to be a tiger at the moment. I'm really like in a big cat phase. I just got yeah. throwing big cats and um, we're, we've actually got like a kitten um, on the way. Like how we're hoping to kind of pick it up soon. So I think I've become a bit kind of cat, cat crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I also love that you didn't even hesitate. You're like, tigers, definitely. Yeah, tigers. I've, like everything, everything I've, is like yeah. cats. And um, yeah, I've got a bit of a soft spot. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lorna, for joining us. It's been so lovely speaking with you and hearing about your inspiration and, and just, yeah, getting to know you. And everyone, please check Lorna out at Lorna Scoby on Instagram and at lornascoby.com to just see her beautiful work and get yourself a copy of that 365 book. <laughs> They're in beautiful, bold colors and have a play in it every day because it just really does make getting creative very easy. Nice. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's just been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and, um, and to talk about creativity as well. And thank you. Thank you. So that's the end of that episode. We really hope you enjoyed it and would love to hear what you learned. If you haven't yet, be sure to click that subscribe button and get first dibs on all future episodes. Also, be sure to check out the previous ones because there's some fantastic nuggets and amazing guests there too. We do this podcast for free in the hope that you can benefit from it. So any support you can give us would be incredible. Please tell your friend, tell your neighbours, your parents, your cats and dogs about it. We would love to really grow this podcast even better. Please leave us a review. We love reading them. And if you'd like to explore that creative side of yours, be sure to check out at MYO London or at Creative Jungle Co on Instagram and get in touch. Here's to a much more creative and happier life. You've you got, got this, you creative, creative legend. legend.